Hello, artist. This week we're going to be um, learning about the artist Vincent van Gogh. This is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It's called The Starry Night. In just a moment, you're going to be listening to the story Camille and the Sunflowers. I want you to look for some of his paintings as you follow along with the story. These are some of the paintings that you will find. All right, sit back, relax, and listen. Camille and the Sunflowers, a story about Vincent van Gogh by Lawrence Anholt. Where Camille lived, the sunflowers grew so high they looked like real suns, a whole field of burning yellow suns. Every day after school, Camille ran through the sunflowers to meet his father, who was a postman. Together they would lift down the heavy sacks of mail. One day a strange man arrived in Camille's town. He had a straw hat, a yellow beard, and quick brown eyes. I am Vincent, the painter, he said, smiling at Camille. Vincent came to live in the yellow house at the end of Camille's street. He had no money and no friends. Let's try to help him, said Camille's father. So they loaded the cart with pots and pans and furniture for the yellow house. Camille picked a huge bunch of sunflowers for the painter and put them in a big brown pot. Vincent was very pleased to have two good friends. <clears throat> Vincent asked Camille's father if he would like to have his picture painted dressed in his best blue uniform. You must sit very still, said Vincent. Camille loved the bright colors Vincent used and the strong smell of paint. As Camille watched, his father's face appeared like magic on the canvas. The picture was strange, but very beautiful. Vincent said that he would like to paint his whole family, Camille's mother, his big brother, his baby sister, and at last, Camille himself. Camille was very excited. He had never even had his picture taken with the camera. Camille took his painting to school. He wanted everyone to see it, but the other children didn't like the picture. They all began to laugh. This made Camille feel very sad. After school, some of the older children started teasing Vincent. They ran along behind him as he went out to paint. Even the grown-ups joined in. It's time he got a real job, they said instead of playing with paints all day. Camille sat for hours watching Vincent work. It was very hot, but Vincent worked fast. He painted the sunflower fields and even the sun itself. He is the sunflower man, said Camille to himself. But no matter how hard Vincent worked, he could never sell any of his paintings. If I had a lot of money, said Camille, I would like to buy them all. Oh, thank you, my friend, laughed Vincent. One afternoon, as Camille and Vincent were coming back from the fields, <laughs> some of the children from Camille's school were waiting. They shouted at Vincent and threw stones at him. Camille wanted them to stop. But what could he do? He was only a small boy. At last, he ran home in tears. Listen, Camille, said his father. People often laugh at things that are different but I've got a feeling that one day they will learn to love Vincent's paintings. That night, Camille had a strange dream. He saw Vincent standing in the moonlight high above the town. Vincent had stuck candles on his hat so that he could see. The sunflower man was painting the stars. Early the next morning, Camille was awakened by a loud knocking at the door. Some men from the town had come to see his father. Listen, postman, they said. We want you to give this letter to your friend. It says he must pack up his paints and leave our town. Camille slipped out through the back door. He ran down the street to the yellow house. It seemed very quiet inside. Then Camille saw the sunflowers he had picked for Vincent. They had all dried up and died. Camille felt sadder than ever. Vincent was upstairs packing his bags. He
He looked very tired, but he smiled at Camille. Don't be sad, he said. It's time for me to paint somewhere else now. Perhaps they will like my paintings there. But first, I have something to show you. Vincent lifted down a big picture. There were Camille's flowers, bigger and brighter than ever. Camille looked at the painting, then he smiled too. Goodbye, Sunflower Man, he whispered, and ran out of the yellow house and into the sunshine. Camille's father was right. People did learn to love Vincent's paintings. Today, you would have to have a lot of money if you wanted to buy one. But now people all over the world go to museums and galleries just to see Vincent's paintings of the yellow house, of Camille and his family, and especially the pictures of the sunflowers, so bright and yellow. They look like real suns. So as we learned from the story, Vincent van Gogh was not famous um, when he was alive. Many people um, at the time didn't like his work because it was so different from anything they had ever seen before. And uh, like Camille's father said, people often laugh at things that are different. Um, but before long, um, people started to appreciate how unique and original and beautiful his paintings were. So Vincent van Gogh liked to paint many different things. He painted portraits of people, he painted inside the inside of rooms, and he painted things from nature. These are a few of his paintings from nature. Now, because our lesson this week is going to be about um, using van Gogh's sunflowers as inspiration, I'd like you to watch this brief video. Let's look at a slide of Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers. Notice how different each flower is. Van Gogh loved nature and desired to represent the things he saw with great emotion. He wanted to create a new way of seeing nature. Let's talk about how to look at a sunflower and how to draw it. It's important to look at the center of the sunflower. The center is a very large circle, but the circle doesn't always face you. Sometimes it is turned away from you, so the circle looks more like an oval. Also, I'd like you guys to observe the shapes of the petals. They are thin, long petals. They aren't shaped like rose petals. As the wind and gravity affect these thin, long petals, they bend around. As the sunflower reaches the end of its life cycle and starts to wilt, notice what happens to the shape of the petals. Notice the texture of the center of the flower. Notice the colors and how they change. The bright yellows become browns, for example. Van Gogh was poor most of his life and was often in the company of laborers and hardworking people. He wanted everyone to be able to have artwork in their homes. And even more specifically, he wanted the poor around him to have sunflowers all the time. As we look at these pictures of Van Gogh's sunflowers mm -hmm. and observe the different ways you can draw or paint a sunflower, I want us to challenge ourselves to create unique sunflower shapes. Look at the center and where it's facing. Look at the petals and how they move. Look at the color of the petals. Look at what surrounds the sunflower. So now let's do our best to represent these sunflowers for ourselves. Okay, so for part one of this lesson, you are going to need white paper, a pencil, and a Sharpie or a black marker, a black crayon, or a black colored pencil because we want to have a dark outline. All right, let's create. You can pause the video whenever you need to catch up.
Hello artists, I hope you've enjoyed um, learning about our featured artist, Vincent Van Gogh, and viewing all of his beautiful paintings. Um, so today we're going to use his work as inspiration, and we are going to draw a vase with sunflowers. Um, now, you viewed that video about what sunflowers look like when they're growing in nature, right? Um, we learned about how the uh, centers are very large and how the um, petals are very long and thin, right? Now, as we start to draw, I want you to keep something in mind. If the flower was facing us, that big circle in the center would look like a perfectly round circle, right? But as we, if the flowers are turned in other directions, watch what happens to this cap, the circle in the cap. You notice how it starts to turn into more of an oval shape. So as we draw the flowers in our vase, they are going to be turned and facing in many different directions. So not all of the centers will look like perfect circles. Okay, the first thing I want you to do is grab a pencil. I'm going to draw with a marker so that you're able to see my work. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw the face. I'm gonna make it a little lower, but not all the way at the bottom of my paper. Okay, so I'm going to start with a curve at the top, and then I'm going to draw a curved side, another curve that matches it over here, and I'm going to draw a curved line at the bottom. Now, I'm going to make mine look similar to Van Gogh's, and I'm also going to draw a line in the center. And I'm going to sign my name like a professional artist, Mrs. Spooner. Okay. The next thing we need to do is make our vase look like it's sitting on a table. Right now it looks like it's floating in the air. Now if I drew my line right here, it might look like the vase was going to fall over off the table, right? So I'm going to come up a little bit higher and I'm going to draw my table right here. Now I don't want to draw over the vase, so I'm going to pretend that I'm hopping over and continuing my line on the other side. Now we want our flowers to fill up this space, so we're going to draw them all over the place, right? I'm going to start with my first one kind of off to the side a little bit, because in art it looks nice when things aren't all lined up in the middle. So I'm going to draw my first big circle right here. So this flower is going to be facing me directly. Now, sunflower petals are long and skinny, right? I'm sure when you were younger, you learned how to draw a flower similar to this, right? A little circle in the middle, and then you went boop, 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 boop. Now this isn't really what flowers look like in nature, right? So we're going to try to make this look more realistic. So I'm going to draw a long petal like that. I'm gonna go up and then back down. And if your petal has a little bit of a bend to it, that's okay. It's going to make it look more natural. So I want you to go all the way around the circle. I'm going to stop the video right here and give you a chance to catch up. Alright, I've gone all the way around my circle with the first row of petals. And then I also went on the inside, in the center of my sunflower, and I made little dots in a circle following the circle shape. Alright, now after you have a completed row of flowers, you're going to go behind that row and you're gonna stop so it looks like the next row of petals is tucked behind 
like that from underneath. So I'm going to go all the way around, making my second row of petals. Notice that some of them have a little bit of a bend or a curve. Because that makes it look, look more natural. Okay, so for my next sunflower, I'm going to put one up here. And I'm going to make it look like it's turning this way. So instead of facing me, it's going to be turned. So my circle is going to turn into more of an oval. Now because the petals, or because it's turned this way, the petals that are closer to me on this side are going to look longer or bigger. And the ones on this side that are farther away are going to be much smaller. So I'm going to start on this side and draw my long petals. Now as I start to turn away and get further away from me, they're going to start to get a little bit smaller. And on this side, they're going to be much, much shorter. Okay, so you can tell that they're curving down. Now, each time we draw a sunflower, we are also going to draw a second row that looks like it's behind the flower. Notice that they're about the same size as the first row. And then I'm also going to draw my ring of dots on the inside. Now, since this is further away from me, it's going to be closer to my line. Like that. And then it's going to come away from it a little bit right there. All right, I'm going to show you one more flower um, before I pause the video and let you fill in on your own. You can put flowers all over the place. Uh, Van Gogh had 11 sunflowers in the vase of the painting that um, is to the side over here. But I'm going to see how many I can fit in my vase. I might not have enough space for 11. So I'm going to do, let's see, one other right here. And now this one is going to be curving down. Um, in the video, we saw that as the sunflower starts to wilt um, and die, it, the petals start to shrink and shrivel, and eventually they fall off, and we're just kind of left with that green part, right? So I'm going to draw a sunflower that looks like that. So I have an oval because it's pointing this way, and I'm going to draw those little green leafy petals that are the underneath part. So this one will be a sunflower that has started to, um, to wither. And then once again, I'm going to draw the ring of dots. And it's going to, since this is further away from me, get closer to my line. Okay. Notice I'm not drawing the stems or the leaves yet. We're going to do that after we've drawn all of the flowers that we want to have up here. So I'm going to pause the video and I will come back and show you um, how I've filled in the rest of this space with sunflowers that are facing all different directions. Okay, so I have filled in, as you can see, a few more flowers. Um, I want to show you now um, how to overlap. So we're going to make it look like um, a couple of these flowers are behind some of the ones we've just drawn. We're going to layer them. So I'm going to draw an oval. This sunflower is going to be facing this way. And notice how when I got right here, I stopped and I pretended to draw and I skipped over and I went to the next spot. So as I move around my sunflower, 
If I bump into one that's already there, I'm going to only pretend like I continued to keep drawing. See, I stopped. So I'm going to draw, stop. But I would pretend like the petal continues to go beyond it. So I stopped, and I draw, stop. This petal is starting to turn this way, and it's going to look like it's tucked behind right here. This side is further away, so my petals are going to get shorter. I'm going to draw my second row. Now, I'd like you to have at least one flower looking like it's going off of the page. Some are going off of the page. Like, we only see half of the flower, or a portion of it. So I'm going to put one up here where I have this empty space. So this flower is going to be facing up. So I'm going to draw my oval this way. And notice, it looks like it goes off. So if I were to keep drawing, my oval would continue like this, right? But I stop because that's the end of my paper. Now, since my flower is facing this way, this side of the petals are going to look longer. This side of the petals will be shorter. Do your second row of petals behind that one. Make sure you add the dots. Go in the center. All right. And there we go. Now, the last part is to do my stems. Now, I'm not going to draw over this, right? I'm going to pretend, you know, the stem is right underneath the flower. That's what holds it up. So I'm going to pretend to draw from the center. And then as soon as I have a blank spot, I'm going to come down like that. Sunflower stems are sort of thick, right? So let's see here, pretend that it's coming from this direction, and I'm going to draw it coming around like this. This one needs a stem, so I'm going to pretend to draw until I have a space that's open. Draw, 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 pop, draw, come down into my base. And I need to draw the line on the other side to show how thick it is. It's coming from behind. There we go. This flower needs a stem, so it's curving down like this. So it will come up into my base like that. Maybe there's a flower tucked behind here somewhere that I can't see, so I'm going to add another stem there. This one. This one needs a stem. This one needs a stem, so it's going to curve up. Okay. And then you'll want to add a few leaves. They're just long and thin. I'll add a green leaf up here. our beautiful vase filled with sunflowers pointing in all different directions. 
Um, Okay, um, so I hope you enjoyed drawing our Vincent Van Gogh inspired sunflowers. Um, I want you to leave your artwork uncolored. Okay, I want you, because next week when we do part two, I'm going to show you a new way of coloring. I want you to try a technique that Van Gogh used, blending several colors. So we're going to do it different than how you would color in a coloring book. So please be patient, complete your drawing, and put it somewhere safe until uh, part two comes out. All right, in the meantime, I want you to record your art in Flipgrid so I can see your progress. All right, I'm so excited to see what you did. Bye.